In this video, we're going to take a look at the Cogent Data Hub bridging interface. I've already started the Data Hub, and if I double click, we can bring up the Properties window. And I'll just show you that I've already made a couple of connections. One of them is to the OPC Foundation's Quick Start demo server. And under here, there is some static data, and these three inputs here. I want to map those to some data that's being generated by the second OPC server that I've connected to, the top server. And under the top server, I'm going to take some of this generated ramp data and I want to map it and bridge it to these three inputs here. So if I look at the bridging interface and open up configure bridges, you can see the bridging interface is divided into three different sections. We've got a source panel, a destination panel, and a panel where we can define some transformations on the data as it passes through the bridge. So let's get started. So first I want to choose the first source point. So I'll open up top server again, and the first one I'm going to choose is this ramp float one. And you remember I wanted to bridge that to the input1 variable. And that's all we need to do. I expand this a little bit. We click. I'm not going to apply a transform to this first one. You see we've created a bridge. If we come over to our data now, you can see that input1 is now updating with the data from the ramp float one variable. So let's go do that again. I'll choose float 10. This time I'm going to put it into input 2. And this time I'm going to apply a linear transformation to this. I'm going to multiply it by 10. Press OK. And you come back, we can see that we've got input 1. And then input 2 is, happens to be the same number, but multiplied by 10. And if we just go through again, we can do a similar thing. Point 0.3, I'll say, just so it stands out. Using these uh, linear transformations, we can apply scaling, and we can also do range mapping to clamp uh, a value between a specific range so that the input can be mapped properly to the output. So let's uh, apply that. And as you can expect here, we've got our three mappings. So that's how bridging is configured. You can also bridge, let's say we want to bridge this, and we wanted to select a few of these variables and put them into a new data domain that we're going to use for something else. Maybe we're going to tunnel it somewhere or we're going to use it in uh, some other notification. We can actually create data points. If we come here and I call this, well, let's call this my test domain. Use the colon separator and I'll create a new point, my test point one. And then if I, so I'll just do this as a direct copy. If I press apply, you can see that down here, we've got a test domain created. We come and look in our data viewer. Where is it? Ah, sorry, underneath here, there's our new test domain. And there's my point one with the value from the top server being bridged into it. So we can make direct bridging connections between um, data points that are already reside in one server, bridge them to a data point in another server, or we can bridge from a server to a point we create within the data hub that we may want to use for something else.